The Devil May Cry series has been the blueprint of stylish action games since it launched in 2001 and is personally my favorite video game series of all time. I was first introduced to the world of DMC when I saw this elegant sexy man in Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and I just had to know more about the series. Since that day I've been addicted to the stylish combat and outrageous characters that this series has to offer and today I'm going to be going through every single game in the series and ranking them on a tier list. Starting with S tier being the best and F tier being the worst. I also need to once again disclose that I'm ranking these all based on my own personal opinions and trust me, I've got some opinions that are not exactly popular. So if you see or hear anything that you disagree with, please take your aggression and throw it at a window. And if you do have a different opinion, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to talk about it. And with that out of the way, let's begin this list with the game that started it all, Resident Evil 4. Oh wait, hold on a second. The story of Devil May Cry 1 is very simple. Dante is the son of a legendary demon named Sparta who killed an evil demon named Mundus to save humanity. Sparta settled down with a human and had Dante and his twin brother Virgil, but when Sparta passed away, Mundus sent demons to kill the family, leaving Dante the only survivor or so we think. Years later, Dante is now the owner of a demon hunting business named Devil May Cry, and when a nice lady drives a motorcycle through his shop, she informs him that the Demon King is returning, and Dante needs to go smack him around for revenge. Oh, and this lady looks exactly like Dante's mom, because she was created by Mundus to trick Dante into showing up to the island so he can kill him. In case you didn't get my joke earlier, Devil May Cry was originally concepted to be Resident Evil 4, but was deemed to be too action focused. The irony in that can't be understated. Instead of scrapping the idea altogether, they tasked the director, Hideki Kamiya, to make a new IP. The combat of Devil May Cry, even in the early days, is so satisfying to play. The game itself is meant to be challenging, and while there are things you can do to make the game easier, you're rewarded for mixing up your attacks and playing as stylishly as possible. You have melee attacks on one button and firearms on the other, and on top of being able to jump and the ability to step on enemies to reset your attacks, you have yourself a good time. You also get access to a powered up state called the Devil Trigger, which enhances your attacks, gives you access to special moves, and regain health. The enemies of this game are actually pretty memorable with the whole puppet theme, but we also get a good variety of different enemy designs that each have their own strategy to be taken down efficiently. For example, if you parry the Sin Scissor enemies, you can actually one-shot them with your pistols. The boss fights are pretty good too, and they present a challenge by either confiding you to small areas or by adding some sort of weird gimmick to spice things up. Unfortunately, one of the downfalls that comes with this being an old-school PS2 game is that they reuse all of these bosses three times. There's even a boss that will put you in a state where you have to fight a weaker version of another boss. It's actually a little ridiculous by today's standards, but I can let it slide here. The game, and frankly the series as a whole, does a great job of making you look cool, but also makes you feel like you deserve the result because of the challenge presented. But while there are a lot of things in this game that work really well and are still used today, there are other things that do not hold up that are exclusive to this game. So for this next section, I'm going to list what I call the written and directed by Hideki Kamiya sections. First up, we have horrific platforming. The camera flips out and the game just sucks when it comes to precision jumping. We have the underwater sections, which are just... No. We have an enemy encounter where you only have seven frames to react after exiting the cutscene. There's Kamiya's obsession with Space Harrier in the final boss. I've never been a fan of this section personally, and I heard on harder difficulties it's an even bigger pain in the ass. And finally, we have the finale where Dante flies the plane off the island, and I actually enjoyed that, but we're never getting anything like that in a Devil May Cry game ever again. And obviously, with it being an early 2000s game, the dialogue is just so, so bad. So bad that it fills my dark soul with light! <laughs> Sorry, I, I had to do it. I wouldn't be a DMC fan if I didn't. It's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it does have a lot of charm, but it definitely makes it stand out from the rest of the series just in terms of how everybody behaves, especially Dante. In the end, I like DMC 1. It's not my favorite, but it's good and a fantastic starting point that has a great foundation for the rest of the series. It doesn't hold up all that well by today's standards, but it's still a very solid entry, so I'm going to give it a B tier. So I know a majority of you guys want me to absolutely tear this game to shreds, but I'm not gonna do that. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of this game, but it's not the worst thing in the world. My main problem with Devil May Cry 2 is that it just doesn't do anything that people liked about the first game. Interesting combos and mechanics? Nope. Stat buffs and dull combos. Confined areas where you need to optimize spacing and combat? Nope. Stand across the room and shoot everyone. Fun and interesting characters? You knew him? 
Definitely not. They also made the game easier and gave you a desperation move in Devil Trigger that basically just wins the game for you. The game incentivizes you to just shoot everything because that's how you get the pain to stop as fast as possible. And it's just so boring. But I stand by what I said. It's not as bad as other games out there. We actually do get some cool things here. There's a bunch of new mechanics like the dodge button and being able to shoot multiple enemies at the same time in different ways, which is obviously the prototype for the styles that are presented in the rest of the series going forward. Dante has a cool outfit and uh, yeah, that's really it, huh? It's playable. That's something. Did you notice I haven't talked about the enemies and the bosses yet? Yeah. I do have another confession to make. I have owned my copy of Devil May Cry 2 since 2013. I've beaten the game twice and only just recently did I finally play as Lucia for this video. This is my live reaction to just finishing the Lucia campaign. There's no real like unique moves or anything. She's just kind of doing melee attacks and then she has like the knife thing, which is really cool. Fundamentally, like they're really just kind of the same character, except Lucia just shoots guns slower. This, this certainly was a campaign, all right. I think I would have enjoyed this a lot more, honestly, if it just wasn't actually just Dante's campaign with some minor differences. And like if fundamentally she was a different character, I would have enjoyed it more. Even the story and the ending just turns into a pile of nothing burgers. Dante gets a request to kill a guy and he does this weird two-faced coin toss thing because Dante ends up getting trapped in hell and it's left ambiguous on if he comes back. But then they later revealed in one of the novels that he just found a random portal to get out. And when he shows up to his shop with Lucia waiting for him, he just leaves her on red and orders a pizza. This game is without a doubt the lowest point in the series. They barely acknowledge it as canon. And when they eventually did bring these characters back when Phi was releasing, they only did it in a Japanese exclusive book where Dante cock blocks Lucia and she never talks to him again. What a Chad. I still stand by what I said. At least the game is playable and some enjoyment can be had. However, I'm putting Devil May Cry 2 at D tier. <laughs> This was the first game in the series that I played, and while Devil May Cry 1 may have started the character action genre, this game is the poster child by exceeding it in every way. Over the top action, colorful and memorable characters, a good story, complex mechanics and gameplay that focused on player skill, a high difficulty, and a variety of enemies and weapons to choose from. Starting off, they gave Dante four different styles to choose from at the very beginning. You have Trickster for staying on the move and dodging, Swordmaster for cool devil arm combos, Royal Guard to parry attacks and release all of that energy to do massive damage, and I guess Gunslinger is here too. You also get access to two new styles as you progress through the game, Quicksilver to freeze time, and Doppel ganger to give you a shadow that copies your moves. Each of these styles have their advantages and their disadvantages, but they're made to cater to each player's individual play style. I was always a trickster and swordmaster guy, but over the years I've been switching over to royal guard more and more as I've gotten better at parrying timing. I'd be here forever if I went through each of the weapons, so I'll say that each of them offers something unique, and experimenting with them for different combinations is so much fun. From ice nunchucks to dual swords to a guitar that shoots out bats as you play it, it's hard to pick just two for for any given mission. And finally, Dante once again gets a devil trigger, but the twist this time is that each devil arm gives you an extra buff on top of a DT explosion that will deal a massive amount of damage if you charge the devil trigger before activating it. Combining all these mechanics on top of jump canceling and roll parries makes it one of the most complex and entertaining games to play, even today. And by having access to everything right out of the gate, the game expects more skill out of the player, and it does that by increasing the difficulty. For those who played in the West, the normal mode of Devil May Cry 3 is actually the game's hard mode, and because of that, the difficulty spikes can be pretty jarring, even taunting you with the infamous easy mode is now selectable line if you die too many times. And obviously replaying the game multiple times increases the difficulty and basically evolves with you as you have more tools at your disposal and you get more comfortable. And I always recommend people at least try Dante Must Die to get the best challenge possible. The level design is great as you explore the tower and occasionally 
Normally you'll need to backtrack, but it's nothing too egregious. And it goes back to what DMC1 did with everything being so claustrophobic and occasionally giving us rooms with more space, but giving us enemies with fast and long range attacks to compensate. I love the story of DMC3. It's a prequel where Dante has to face off against his brother Virgil who summoned this giant demon tower to open a gate to hell. So we have this sibling rivalry between Virgil and Dante and a B story with a human devil hunter named Lady who is trying to get revenge on her father Arkham who is teaming up with Virgil. This story focuses on Dante learning to embrace his demon heritage and stop his brother and Arkham from essentially taking over the world and Lady learns to trust Dante even with her prejudice against demons. Every character is super memorable, even the boss fights get their own moments to shine, but I don't think anyone holds a candle to Virgil because this is the game that solidified Virgil as one of the best rival characters in video game history. A complete contrast to Dante's wacky Yahoo personality, Virgil is a calm, cool, and collected and POWERFUL individual that's reflected not just in the cutscenes, but in his boss fights. Virgil 3 is still one of my favorite boss fights of all time to this day, especially on Dante Must Die where he's presented as the ultimate challenge for the player to overcome. This game defined my childhood, hell, it defined a whole generation and influenced so many other video games with its outrageous characters and kick-ass action. Devil May Cry 3 gets a big fat S rank. Wanna know the name? Devil May Cry. About a year after DMC3 released, Capcom re-released the game with a bunch of new features. Nowadays, this would just be a five minute update, but these are technically two different games, so I'm gonna be brief on the changes. First off, they had their fun trolling us Westerners with the difficulty, and they fixed it so that normal was actually normal, and gave us the option on how we'd like the checkpoint system to work. One of the best additions that they could have added, though, was Turbo Mode, which makes the game play 20% faster, and is, in my opinion, the definitive way to play Devil May Cry. It takes a few missions to adjust to, but once you act it, it's really hard to switch back to normal. They added three new boss fights with Jester, the first one being mandatory, and it was fun being able to smack him around after all that taunting in the original. They included the Bloody Palace mode from Devil May Cry 2, which is a mode where you go through at least 100 floors and at most 10,000. And most importantly, we got Virgil as a playable character. His moveset is very limited compared to Dante's, but his calm, cool, and collected style of play contrasts Dante's wacky arsenal of weapons and styles. This is now the definitive edition of Devil May Cry 3 that gets re-released all the time, so if you want to play the original version of the game, you'll have to get it on the PS2. And before we move on to the next game, I do need to bring up the elephant in the room, and that's Devil May Cry 3 on the Switch. Around 2019, Capcom started re-releasing the Devil May Cry trilogy on the Switch, and while the first two games were just ports, they decided to do something special with the third game by adding in a few additional features. That being a weapon wheel to access all of your weapons at the same time, access to all of your styles at the same time, and a co-op mode for Bloody Palace. The first two were features features that were introduced in the later DMC games, but were never available for three outside of mods. And while all these sound like very minor changes, it makes Devil May Cry 3 feel like a completely different game, and is personally my new favorite way to play the game. It leads to a lot more experimentation with the weaker weapons and styles, since you were originally stuck with one style and two weapons for a given mission. DMC 3 already had massive depth with its combat, but this completely shatters the skill ceiling. The only downside to all of this is that this is exclusive to the Switch, and I'm sure the new features were added to upsell yet another re-release of this game, while also giving the longtime fans a little something extra. I doubt it'll ever get released on of the older consoles, but at least this gives me some reason to dust off my Switch. And obviously, since this is the superior version of the original title, it's going right in front of it on the tier list. Devil May Cry 4 is a very interesting title in the series. Moving on to the next generation of console hardware, this is the first time that Devil May Cry tried to reach a broader audience by going multi-platform. And in order to cater to the new fans of the series, they made the choice to introduce a new protagonist. In this game, you play as Nero, a young devil hunter with a very unique demon arm that gives him special abilities. He's a member of the Order of the Sword, and he gets tasked with finding a mysterious man in a long red coat who assassinated their leader in the prologue. Gee, I wonder who that could be. Nero has two very unique abilities, the first one being his devil bringer, where you're able to tether enemies to close the distance and then grab them to unleash a special attack. He also has a sword with an engine in it, and revving it up will give you extra charges to increase your attack speed and power. And once it's maxed out, you can store up to three charges. The charging is a bit slow, but the real beauty in Nero's playstyle is actually doing what's called an exceed. If you time your hit of the rev when the sword is swinging down, you'll get a charge automatically. And if you hit it on a perfect frame, you'll get a max act to get all three charges instantly. So one could theoretically just have in infinite charges if you time it perfectly every single time. But who has the time and energy to learn how to do all of that? 
Nero also gets a double trigger with an interesting twist. He gets a JoJo stand that does extra attacks while also getting some DT specific moves. And even activating his DT will not only hit enemies, but will stop all inertia and hit stun and leave him invulnerable to attacks for a small period of time. Nero's combat style offers a great approachability to newcomers of the series, while not being a waste of time for those who want to take things to the next level. Now, I'll be completely honest, when I first played this game, I did not like Nero. I thought he was a clear imitation of Dante and I wasn't a fan of his mechanics at the time. But the other thing is that I just got done playing as DMC3 Dante and being introduced to a new character so soon was a bit jarring, especially since I loved Dante in that game. He grew on me over the years and I think he's a great addition to the team with his unique and addictive as hell gameplay. And about halfway through the game, we switch as Dante. And if y'all thought Dante was crazy in Devil May Cry 3, well, you ain't seen nothing yet, Sunny D. If I were to find a book on action game characters with insane technical depth, this yippee yahoo pizza cowboy would be on the fucking cover. I will say though, and this is probably an unpopular opinion. I'm not the biggest fan of Devil May Cry for Dante. And the best way to describe it is that he feels uncomfortable for me. Dante gets access to five styles, three devil arms, and three guns, all of which can be switched mid gameplay for the first time. He has a lot of mechanics because of that, and adding the amount of advanced tech that he has, like guard flying and DT distortion, gives him so much technical depth that he can be a bit overwhelming, at least for me. I play a very basic Dante and I just can't seem to grasp on how to play him at an advanced level. I still enjoy playing as him, but I feel like I'm missing out on a lot of what makes him such a fun character to play because I just don't understand how to get to that next level. I love watching advanced Dante gameplay, and I'm sure seeing someone who knows what they're doing with Dante is the equivalent to watching Beethoven perform live. There is another small critique I have with Dante, just a minor complaint that I'm sure we can all agree with, and that's uh, Dante's levels are trash. When you switch to Dante after playing through Nero's campaign, you have to backtrack the entire game while also fighting the same bosses a second time. Except for Credo, of course. He, he's the best boss in the game, and you sadly only fight him one time as Nero. Recycling the bosses is something that made sense for the older games because of the lower budgets and the quality of the consoles, but I feel like that doesn't really sit well when Devil May Cry 4 clearly has top tier production value, at least at the time. To make things worse, when you take control as Nero at the end of the game, you have to fight all of the bosses again in a boss rush. And this is something that puts a huge blemish on DMC4. The level design and the strange choices that they made to pad out the game are just not fun. The puzzles in here are very trivial. We have some enemy designs that just aren't fun to fight and don't even get me started on the dice games. The thing that saves this game is the combat. And when I watch other people play Devil May Cry 4, it's mainly in the Bloody Palace mode where you just fight a hundred floors of enemies. Either that or speed runs, because Devil May Cry 4's speed run is actually really fun to watch. I'm personally interested in running it someday when I have more time. The best way that I could describe Devil May Cry 4 would be Miss Potential. Still a solid game with amazing combat with not so stellar enemy and level design. So I'm gonna put Devil May Cry 4 on B tier. Devil May Cry. So this is a port of Devil May Cry 4 on mobile devices. And although the plot for the most part is pretty much the same as the console versions, the story was tweaked to add some minor differences to the overall plot. A large one being that Nero and Dante's stories are being split into two separate narratives rather than one continuous one. Now I never got to play this and unfortunately there's no way to be able to play the game anymore, at least from what I could find. So I brought in a special guest who has played it to talk about their experiences with it. You just recently played through this game. Uh, how would you best describe the gameplay for Refrain. To put it generously, a pocket experience of DMC4, but it does that very well. Unfortunately, they've started distributing the app itself, so the only way to get this game now is through kind of like gray legal means. If you have purchased the game, uploading the IPA file to your device. In DMC Double May Cry, if you double tap, and you go melee, you do stinger. That system actually showed up first in four refrain because of the touch screen. It's much more easier to double tap than to double flick on the controller. So I think for things like streak, and there is actually a four refrain exclusive move called dash shot, which is kind of like a stinger version of Blue Rose on Nero, which is super cool and I wish it made it to DMC5. This is actually the only time where you can fight Nero as a boss fight. And it's a good thing that maybe there's no DMC5 boss for Nero because if he constantly spams Snatch and I'm playing as Dante and Virgil, I would be pissed because he does that in four refrain and it's super annoying. There is some customization for things like combos and stuff but it's definitely more about exploring the moveset and seeing how you can kind of like weave it in between the attacks than coming up with your own 
combos because you know it's just the nature of the app and the technology at the time there's only so many moves that you can fit onto a small screen and that kind of memory back then even dante's moves you actually have to switch them out and the devil trigger versions of the characters are actually separate characters you can't access those things because of the memory limitation of the time of course now if they have the technology with their mt framework with the way the smartphones are now they could probably put everything on there if you're itching from for some dmc on the go it's honestly not as bad and it still kind of holds up today as like a quick sort of dmc sort of game Unfortunately, there is no jump cancelling. If you sky star in this game, you don't really get inertia at the end. But there mm. is a inertia only room. So it's a room where if you rainstorm, <laughs> what? but the thing is, the inertia is from the blizzard with weather effect and it changes. So the only way to do like a rainstorm and go around the enemy is to memorize the pattern of the direction of inertia every six seconds in that one room. Very funny. Interesting. Um, there's also an another thing where every time you do an attack, you go forward a little bit. Mm. If you high time and go forward and go off the ledge, you will actually start the high time as you're falling off the ledge. So you can do like mid-air high times. Oh, that's but cool. Only, it would make some very funny eco style, like environmental combo style combos. Mm. But yeah, it, the phone is bricked. So I can't <laughs> but it's, it's a very old phone. Yeah. yeah, when you told me that the only way to get it would to, would be to get like an old iPod or an old phone or something, I was just thinking like, I do have one that is like actually completely busted, but I was more of like an Angry Birds and Jetpack Joyride kind of kid when it, came to, when it came to mobile games. If you had to rate this on a tier list compared to the rest of the Devil May Cry games, where would you put it? For most people, they would put four refrain above Devil May Cry 2. But let me tell you something about Devil May Cry. I think, let me tell you everyone who's watching something about Devil May Cry 2 right now. Boy, Once you have go. all the devil hearts, there's actual sauce in DMC 2, but you would only ever know if you actually 100% the entire game. Right. Unlock all the characters, and then after six, after about like 30 hours of grinding, then you can say, oh, now it, now I can have fun. After you have really? just reached the, the peak of enlightenment. Culture. That's why I call playing Mastering DMC the Buddhist's path. Because <laughs> it's like, you have to grind 30 hours before you can begin to have fun. But, Fair um, enough. For the majority of people, I would say it makes sense. You could actually put four refrain above Devil May Cry 2. Even so that would be like around the C tier. High C. High, high C, C, very low B. High mm -hmm. C. Like very high C. Okay. Yeah, this is actually not the first DMC mobile game. Or oh, the Jesus first Christ, game. is there another one that I need to cover? <laughs> there is a DMC 3 Java game. There on. is? Yeah, there is. There is some combo stuff there, and it's on like a flip phone as well. Oh my god, so how did I miss this? <laughs> it's beautiful. It's like DMC RuneScape. It's the funniest thing ever. For a flip phone, don't get your expectations too high, but it's a very right. fun thing to it's a fun thing to look back on and go like, yo, they were doing this back in the day. This isn't the only DMC mobile game though. It's a game called Devil May Cry Deadshot. You can't play it anymore. And it's based on DMC one. This was I think when Capcom had like a couple of mini games on their website back in the day. Deadshot is kind of like a top-down 2D sort of Tower of Gilgamesh, Pac-Man sort of... Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at it right now. I see an article from IGN from April 1st, 2003. It looks like an April Fool's joke, but it definitely is. <laughs> That's so funny. DMC has actually always experimented with mobile just to like get its name out there almost like advertising for the main games did you actually play devil may cry deadshot i never played deadshot there's actually no footage of this it was actually on the website that's what we know for sure did you ever play that flip phone dmc3 you can actually emulate it oh. it's possible to play on the computer it's it's not that bad for this uh deadshot I remember seeing this on the Capcom website. Someone told me it was playable, but I don't think so. It was for like phones at the time. It was to promote a certain brand of phone. This was Devil May Cry 1 mobile version. So this was probably limited. It would have probably been a very, I would say medium C. Did you ever three, play there's... The Last Judgment? That's a pachinko game. Curious you don't play that game. The game <laughs> plays itself. You just keep spinning the wheel. They released a app version of the game and the app that version also of the just game, plays uh, itself. Yeah. But the thing is, you don't oh have to spend gosh. real money. You just oh. buy the app and then you can play it. So it's very because Pachinko is known for like its addictiveness. You know what I mean? So yeah, I know what you mean. So I, Devil May Cry X The Last Judgment is going under Pachinko tier, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. okay. The thing is, I would put it as like, you know Lovecraft? You know like the outside section, the void? I would put it there. You would put it because, in the void, okay. <laughs> yeah, because- Devil May Cry, a high definition. 
So when I wanted to get into this series, there was no HD collection. So I had to go out of my way to play it since I never had a PS2 growing up. I found out my next door neighbor was selling their old PS2, so I swiped that immediately, went to my local game store, and bought my copy of DMC3. And maybe a week or so later, that's when the HD collection was announced. The HD collection is exactly what it advertises, an HD re-release of the trilogy for modern consoles. I appreciate the bundle and I actually own two different versions of this on the 360 and the PS4. The sharpness makes some of the cutscenes and especially the hair look a little weird at times, but that's really my only nitpick that I have. And I also just appreciate that it's so easily accessible so more people can get into this series. A tier. <laughs> Here we go. I'm sure you're in one of two camps. You either want me to say that this is the best game in the series or an absolute abomination that should be discarded into the fiery pits of hell. And I'm sure that both camps are gonna be disappointed when I say that I think that this game falls somewhere in the middle of those two extremes. The thing that I've always said about this reboot is that the game is just fine and could be considered good in many aspects. But in terms of what makes Devil May Cry so memorable, it fails to understand that and doesn't live up to the legacy of the series. The iconography of Devil May Cry isn't just in the stylish combat, but also for the memorable and outrageous characters. And to get the obvious out of the way, none of these characters are particularly memorable or likable. And I think it's fair to say that the only reason they're considered memorable is because they're pale imitations of the original. Dante can be a bit of an asshole and not in a fun way. He does get some funny lines, but the way he presents himself overall is like he's trying to imitate somebody who is actually funny and cool, which is ironic because that's exactly what Reboot Dante is. His look doesn't really do much either. It's basically just the reverse of the original and falls into the generic action character category. I clearly prefer the originals and I don't necessarily hate these looks. It's just not DMC. I won't elaborate on the character assassinations because so many other people have done it before me, but just know that I too dislike that Virgil shot a pregnant lady in the stomach before shooting her in the head. And that fucking fedora, Jesus Christ. Why is he wearing a fedora? It makes no sense. I actually kind of like the story if I'm being honest. It's similar to the main themes of DMC 3 and 1 with Dante learning to give a shit about humanity and help save them. And also I liked having a story where Dante and Virgil were actually on good terms with each other and had somewhat of a healthy relationship before Virgil decided to be evil because the gameplay is like Devil May Cry combat, but with a completely different set of controls. The biggest leap is having a dedicated launch button and a dodge roll button, while also having no manual lock on, while also running at 30 frames a second. It does have the fundamentals of DMC combat, and I do also like that the angel and demon modes give you different weapons simultaneously. And I personally like this system in terms of having all of Dante's weapons at once, instead of having to manually cycle through them like in four. I felt like I was really hugging my controller and fully optimizing it by using every button. I like the concept of the devil trigger and the effect it has on the enemies, but I never liked how they all flew up in the air so you were pretty restricted in what you could do in that state. Best thing DMC does though is the level design. Limbo is so cool and having the environments constantly shift around to where you need to pay attention to what's going on and react accordingly made the platforming sections really fun to play. They gave you an angel and a demon pull to traverse around, but also use in combat. It's basically just Nero's Buster, but with less cool follow-ups. The game also has some pretty unique boss fights. They switch it up so that some of them have specific requirements to move to the next phase, but doing so makes them more cinematic. With the exception of the final boss, my favorite had to be the Bob Vargas fight in terms of just presentation, even though he's just a giant floating head. And I think the only one that I actively disliked was Lilith the Succubus. It's just a little boring for my taste. And finally, I don't mind the music. I actually kind of like the Kamakrites and the Nausea songs here, and I think it fits the vibes of the reboot. To sum up my thoughts on this game, I don't think it's bad. I really don't. But if we had the original series and the reboot hanging from a vat of acid, and I had to choose to save one, I'd choose the original without thinking twice about it. I feel like I've been spending this section defending the reboot, but I do think the things it does well is because it's a byproduct of the original series and without it, I feel like it would have been a forgettable game with good combat. I'm glad it exists and I'm a strong believer that without this reboot, we would not have Devil May Cry 5, at least in the state that we have it in now. And I think in the end, that's a blessing I just can't ignore. But with that all being said, I'm putting DMC Devil May Cry at C tier.
Almost two years after the game was released, they announced a definitive edition of the game for next-gen consoles, which fixed a lot of the issues fans and myself had with the original game. First of all, they made sure that you knew this game was running full HD and 60 FPS, slapping it right on the front of the box. They made getting the collectibles more convenient. They also did a fair amount of rebalancing, especially on Demon Evade to make it less powerful. They fixed the color-coded enemies so you can hit them with any weapon, but only the corresponding color will inflict better damage and hit stun. They updated the Devil Trigger so you can choose whether the enemies get launched or not. And most importantly, they got rid of Virgil's stupid fedora Thank God. Oh, and they brought back manual lock on, which was pretty nice. They added a bunch of different modes to make the game more challenging, including Gods Must Die, where enemies spawn with DT active, a must style mode where you only deal damage with an S rank, turbo mode, although I discovered turbo mode is a little broken and will occasionally turn on and off mid mission, which is really dumb. And they had a toggle that just made the game harder in general with tighter parry windows and more challenging style gauges. I didn't mention this before, but Virgil got his own DLC, which was really cool. However, it is hilariously short. I remember getting home from school feeling all giddy because I got to play as Virgil and I beat it in like an hour. <laughs> that was it. They did give him his own bloody palace in here though, which was cool, I guess. Virgil plays like a mosh posh of his DMC move list with some updated moves and obviously utilizing the whole angel demon thing. And his devil trigger is just doppelganger, which I never liked because it felt like they had to give Virgil a devil trigger and they just picked a random ability from DMC3. However, what I really like about it is that you can switch the doppelganger to either attack later or set it so it does neutral, angel, or demon moves. Lastly, they added some DLC costumes in the base game and for the definitive edition, they made a classic Virgil and a DMC1 Dante. The Dante one is my favorite because I love the DMC1 outfit and I really like the way that it looks here. The other ones are all right and the DMC3 Dante just always looked weird to me. I think it's because the body proportions with his shirt off just look weird. Unfortunately, PC players got the short end of the stick because to this day, the game is exclusive to consoles. But overall, it was great that Ninja Theory took the feedback of the fans into consideration when making these changes and I think it really worked out for them. And with these changes in mind, I'm putting DMC Devil May Cry Definitive Edition on B tier. I need more power. While the definitive edition of the reboot does a lot to acknowledge its faults and improve on the base game, Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition unfortunately does the exact opposite. Devil May Cry 4's biggest problem was that it had great combat for both characters, but not enough content to make them shine. And the solution to fix that is to add three more characters with no new levels or enemies. Now, before you say anything, I'm not complaining that they added three new characters, but they barely had the enemy and boss variety for just Dante and Nero. So adding in three more characters shows how little content there was to offer in the first place. That also means that if you want to play as every character, you have to go through the same campaign three times that already reuses the same levels and bosses midway through. I had absolutely no motivation to go through it with Dante and Nero again, and I only did so when I could unlock all of their moves right out of the gate with the amount of Proud Souls that I had. I mainly played as Virgil, and he takes the form of his DMC3 weapons and movesets while also incorporating some things from the reboots. They also gave him a teleport that gives you an easier enemy step, as well as this concentration gauge where you're rewarded for more speed and damage by not getting hit and playing with finesse. And at max concentration, you also get the best move in the game, which is Judgment Cut End. You're also invulnerable when this happens, so you basically get a free screen clear for very little effort. The real satisfaction you get is using the precise timing of Judgment Cuts and Beowulf Charges, along with utilizing each weapon to play stylishly in Virgil's own calm, cool, and collected way. But that did not stop me from spamming Judgment Cut End through Bloody Palace. <laughs> Lady is fine. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot that you can do with her other than just shoot guns. It's a refreshing take on the DMC character formula, but with there being four other characters to choose from, she's got to be my least favorite. Her gimmick also involves a lot of charge shots, and with her rocket specifically, a fully charged shot can melt a boss instantly. Trish, on the other hand, is pretty cool. Her gimmick is that her moveset changes whether or not she has Sparta. You can use round trip to throw it, and then you get melee charge attacks along with lightning trails and Pandora? Okay. She gets the short end of the stick when it comes to reusing assets since a lot of her moves are taken from the other playable characters. Yeah, it seems like the theme of these three characters was to give them a lot of overpowered tools to get through a campaign that, let's be real, most if not all of us had already played at least once already. I personally would have preferred new campaigns even if they were a little smaller and had a bunch of reused assets for them because even the little bits of new character interactions that we get are really fun to see, even if they didn't add anything to the overall narrative. We also get turbo mode again as well as the legendary dark 
Dark Knight mode, where they decrease the enemy's health, but add a shit ton of enemies on screen at once. They gave us the ability to sprint instantly now, which is the least they could do, if I'm being honest. They also started doing this weird thing where they got rid of multiple save files and added microtransactions, which was just irritating. I would consider this the definitive way to play Devil May Cry 4 nowadays, but calling it an improvement over the original is a stretch. It's objectively better than the original in the fact that it does add new characters and modes, but it was definitely more disappointing back in the day when Devil May Cry 5 wasn't guaranteed. This goes right next to Devil May Cry 4 on B tier. So this game came out very recently, but I felt like it was appropriate to talk about it here to end this video with a bang rather than on a whimper. Peak of Combat is a mobile game that was announced even before Devil May Cry 5. And this is a spin-off game developed by the Chinese company called Nebula Joy, which is supervised by the Japanese DMC development team. It's classified as an action RPG with online modes and with a bunch of gotcha elements. The gameplay is basically just a watered down version of Devil May Cry because of the limited screen and storage space. And to me, this is probably my biggest problem with DMC being a mobile game. Why would I play a Devil May Cry game with less mechanics when I could just play Devil May Cry 5. I played the beta last year and I thought it was okay. Like I said, it just felt like watered down DMC combat and platforming with the ability to switch characters, which was admittedly really cool. However, this game went through a lot of changes since it was first revealed. And to talk about it a little bit more in depth, I'd like to bring back our special guest, RK. You're pretty much the peak of combat guy can you tell us a bit <laughs> about like your background with the game and then how you got so involved with it when i played the original betas it was good i like having million stab in the air i like it that at the end of that million stab it launches again i made a combo mat called architects on the original 1.0 version where i had all the weapons you can if you watch that combo mat you will see what the system was capable of it was insane it actually followed dmc devil may cry's control scheme quite a lot you had guns, you had melee, and then you had a special melee. The special melee is a launcher. You can only switch for Dante between Trickster and Royal Guard because the gunslinger moves are now on hold gun, dash gun. The swordmaster moves are now on dash sword and dash melee and also in the melee strings. Lady is better in this game than she is in 4 SE. That doesn't surprise Actually, me at all. She has a dive kick now and it reaches the enemy and you can jump cancel it and it's on command. It's not like the 2.0 version where you have to like slash shoot and then she goes in. Just thinking about 1.0 makes me really <laughs> sad. Dude. Yeah. yeah. And there's no this way to play 1.0 anymore, right? Because yeah. it was like an online exactly. server. So yeah. when it comes to like all the changes from 1.0 to 2.0, like what exactly are those changes here's the freaky thing i see a lot of news outlets they talk about how the combat is good but the monetization is bad mm. the truth for the new version it's the opposite the reason they had to kill 1.0 version is because the monetization was way worse than this 2.0 version believe it or not really right? as long as if you don't want to buy costumes there's a way to, for you to grind i don't know if they changed the system from the latest betas from a second last beta on 2023 october or something like that this mm. system was still the same you get 50 of a character's souls you can grind and every week it changes you can unlock that character for free you will have access to this character but as we know gacha systems they want you to pull for multiple versions of said character right yeah you won't have the sss version of every character obviously the more sss versions you have the more traits that you will unlock that help you more do more dps but every like mechanically speaking you know the move sets and things like this you will unlock them at the first time you unlock the character, which I think is, I, I think that's a lot better system than having a really fleshed out character. And then the more you pay, the more moves you unlock for that character. Mm. Get everything on level one. I think that's fair. The problem is that this level one, I understand why they did it. So for 2.0, for some reason, they've split up the move set across different characters. Beowulf Virgil is one thing. The DMC5 Yamato version is another character. There is a remixed move set of the Yamato, which is its own character. And then there's the Force Edge version of Virgil. For the Legendary Ronin Virgil, which is a DMC5 version, you don't have Rapid Slash. Rapid Slash is on the Lightning Ronin version. You do have Judgment Cut End though. The only character in this new version that follows very similarly to 1.0 is the Frosty Grace Lady. And actually, um, Nero, they give you that character right off the bat for free. 
But the thing is, is that he has no nor normal gun shooting. It's only charge shots. That's so, so I've said weird. to them, it's because I think they saw the videos of um, not just actually. I'm not the only person that was covering 1.0. There was another person called Ki uh, Kaisuki, who's another really good combo mad player. He was doing a lot of stuff too. But um, you know how we had our buttons on the screen because like we would play on blue stacks and we would map certain parts of the screen to certain parts of the controller because controller support wasn't really that stable. I think they saw the inputs that we were doing and a lot of casuals were also looking at the inputs of what we we're doing and they kind of freaked out going like oh you know this is too hard for me point i want to preface here is that 1.0's system is genuinely objectively superior as a whole there's actually some things that i really do like in 2.0 the mobile games were always meant to attract a wider audience for dmcs so from their perspective I think the reason they did this ability system rather than the command input system that we're used to, they want casuals to be able to like not just stay in the air and switch characters and stuff like that, because switching in the air actually gives you an air trick that sometimes doesn't attack. Like for Spark Igniter Lady, if you hit an enemy away and then you switch to Spark Igniter when her switch attack is up, she actually does a rainstorm, but she teleports above the enemy. Yeah, I liked the switch character stuff, but if we could have had like the best of both worlds, then that would have been yep. amazing. Yep. But because all of the characters are kind of like split apart and then you have, you know, the different ways. Yeah, apart. yeah, 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 yeah. If you have like three different versions of Virgil, you could just have all three of your character slots be Virgil. And that's what the character switch does. But like, realistically, you're still playing the same character, but just switching the problem movesets. Is that it's not even that, because now there are four Virgils. So you can't actually <laughs> take his entire moveset with you. I'm going to just say this for real. This game is it's going for the kind of like Genshin, Honkai Impact kind of like audience to kind of expand the DMC brand. Yeah. So in that kind of quote unquote respect, you could say that they actually succeeded magnificently well. They've got a lot of casuals who love this combat system, this 2.0 combat system. Um, 1.0 though, I wish you guys could have experienced one. I can't even tell you how good it was to play on the fly. It was, you know, actually even without a controller. It still man, felt pretty good. Yeah, it was really, really good. The bad thing about 1.0, in order to get legendary moves, you had to pay up a lot of money. That doesn't really surprise lucky. me at all. Yeah. There is no mercy. I think on that account, maybe I spent maybe 2.4, a USD in order to unlock all the all the weapons. Oh jeez. To be fair, you can minus 128 USD with the DMC1 costume. Not good, the monetization. But aside from PvP and co-op, there's not much this game will give you to innovate. The 1.0 version was just as good as a console game. I'm gonna just come out and say it, but that's only in terms of system, not in terms of graphic fidelity. I don't think that was ever the point of this project. I think the point of this project was to make a more condensed, accessible, mobile DMC that people can just play on the go leisurely at their own time. The new 2.0 does succeed at this in terms of if you play long term. If you play long term and you don't care about the newest content, you will be able to at least, I think, if they stick with the old soul grinding system, you will be able to unlock every character for free eventually. Like, of course, every game company, especially Gacha, the more money, the better. There is a free-to-play option with this game, and if you play this game over a long period of time, like, you can get pretty much every character for free. They might change it in the future and be like, no, you can only get up to these five characters, but these premium characters, these new versions of these characters, you have to pay for or something. They might change the system, I don't know. For 1.0, we just got really lucky. I think it was never actually meant to be that game that 1.0 game that hardcore mobile experience the holy crap it was so good i'm gonna be real with you guys just play it as a way for like waiting for dmc6 i mean look at how much five sold they are working on a six there's no way this might be a bit of an unfair question but if you had to rate this game on the tier list what would it be before all of the changes and what would it be at now if we're talking strictly gameplay and not gotcha 1.0 maybe um, high a low s low s for 1.0 it is what about 2.0 i put it in middle b middle b no okay. matter what we say it still has jump cancels you can't put stinger as a skill and yeah. not give this dante guns you're giving dante you're giving cooldown on stinger and dante no guns yeah it's like what? very weird yeah yeah it's a, it's a middle b low b around that time i really appreciate you Understood. coming on and talking to me rk i really yep. appreciate it
After waiting more than a decade, we finally got the sequel to Devil May Cry 4. I couldn't be happier to say that this is the perfect action game for me. I still remember the day this got announced. I was gonna see a movie with my family, but I was watching the E3 showcase just waiting for that announcement because we all had a sneaking suspicion that it was happening. And I wasn't expecting it to be at the Xbox showcase, so when that logo showed up, I lost my mind. Devil May Cry 5! We did it! And there's Dante! Oh my god! I was obsessed with this game. Every news article, every trailer that came out, I was there holding on to every word. Hell, I basically started streaming because I wanted to stream this game when it came out. I played the game in one 13 hour sitting and I won't lie, it was probably one of the best days of my life. Everyone is gonna have their own opinion on which game does what better, but in my opinion, this is the game that takes everything the series does well and puts it together in one package. And after sitting on the series for 10 years, it took a lot of things that other action games did well. My personal favorite Edition is the dynamic music that will change based on how well you do with the style meter. And while I'm here, I have to mention that this is probably one of the best OSTs in a video game ever, and Devil Trigger is an absolute banger. Casey Edwards, you are a godsend. I was also never really a big fan of how fast you would fall to the ground in DMC4, but I really love the way that the gravity and by extension the small buffer and enemy steps feel in order to give the combo a more comfortable experience. And it was enough to make me go back to the older games and try again, and I felt myself getting better because something just finally clicked with me in this game. And that's not to say that one is better than the other, but that's just what I personally like about this game. Nero gets a whole new system change with the Devil Breakers, which are these robot arms that have a bunch of different abilities, a standard one, and an overcharge that'll break it. If you break the overcharge or an enemy hits you while you use it, or even if you just want to break it yourself with the press of a button, you'll instantly swap to the next one. And if you go to the shop, you can order them however you'd like and even find them in the environment. Dante is once again his crazy old self, but his new mechanic is the Sin DT, where you use the DT meter to charge up a gauge to go into this special mode that deals more damage and gives you more powerful moves. The downside is that that when you activate it, you're in that state and the meter slowly starts draining. But the real gameplay strategy is keeping an S rank so you can swap in and out of that mode over and over again without having the meter drain. This is Dante's biggest way of dealing damage minus a few other loops and exploits that we'll get into in a second. And this is a very welcome mechanic for him that also has a story purpose. Plus he doesn't have to share any levels with Nero this time around and that alone makes his story better here. I also loved all of his weapons and the best part is that you can swap all of the weapons in and out and put them in any order you want. And by the end of the game, you have the ability to equip all of them at once if you really want to, which is insane in the best way possible. Of course, Cavalier is my favorite of the bunch. Having a motorcycle chainsaw is just the kind of ridiculous weapon design that this series is known for. But the only only weapon I'm not a huge fan of in concept is the Faust hat. Since it's super powerful by using your red orb currency as a weapon, you can one shot bosses with it on normal difficulties, which is fun to do from time to time, especially in speed runs. But I just personally don't use it because that's just not how I play these games. The last character we have is V, who has a very interesting play style where he uses summons to fight for him, but he has to deal the finishing blow. I think it wouldn't surprise anybody when I say that he's my least favorite character to play. It's not that I don't like like playing him. I love V, but I say that almost solely because we have two of the best characters and the whole action genre in the same game. So he stands out as being underdeveloped in comparison. The story of the game is just perfect. This is a game about the Sparta family, Nero, Dante, and Virgil. It concludes what the entire series had built up to since DMC3 and even tying back to DMC1. As a longtime fan of the series, this game did everything to service the fans. It gave us an emotional story with stakes larger than we'd ever seen before, amazing character moments with the entire cast. It gave us new characters like Nico, who we instantly fell in love with, memorable bosses, amazing level design, a wide variety of different enemy types, the Dante dance, Virgil Virgil's return in full HD, Dante and Virgil's duel, Nero finally getting a real devil trigger, and so much more. The journey leading up to this moment, this video game, was difficult, and at times it felt impossible, like it was just never gonna happen. I've always said I'd be okay with the series ending here because I think it wraps everything up very nicely, and obviously I would happily embrace the next installment. But if this was the last main DMC game that we got, I would be more than satisfied. I could go on and on about how much I love this game and how much it means to me. This is not only my favorite action game, but my favorite video game of all time. And obviously, Devil May Cry 5 gets an S rank.
This is the special edition that added the least compared to the rest of the other special editions, so I'll try to keep this one brief. With the power of the next-gen systems, they were able to add some new modes that weren't possible before on PS4 and Xbox One. They brought back Turbo Mode, just like all the other special editions, as well as the Legendary Dark Knight mode. One change that is new is the inclusion of fidelity and performance modes that will increase the graphical quality of the game to make it look amazing, while also adding ray tracing or prioritizing the performance on console to maintain 60 FPS and even go to 120 FPS. I always play on performance mode at 120 because it just looks so smooth and feels so great. And because DMC is focused on the real time action a majority of the time, you're not really gonna notice the puddle reflections. The only problem is that there isn't a way to keep the graphical fidelity while also playing at higher frame rates, which means that you can't play turbo mode or LDK in fidelity mode. And if you turn on ray tracing, the game drops to 30 FPS, which just feels terrible. And finally, they once again added Virgil as a playable character. And this is without a doubt the most broken version of Virgil, but also the most fun. He keeps his kit from DMC4 SE, but gets a sh shit ton of new abilities. He now has Doppelganger, which functions very similarly to how it does in the reboot. He has a Sin DT, which is basically just his regular DT. He gets two more super moves for Beowulf and Mirage Edge that can now be used outside of Devil Trigger. Although, it'd be better to use them in DT, since you can use it three times in a row. And finally, Judgment Cut is so, so broken. They updated Virgil's Judgment Cut to where you can activate it up to four times in a row. And if you have better timing for it, it comes out out faster and more powerful. And if that isn't enough, you can activate Devil Trigger to get three additional hits per Judgment Cut. And if that isn't enough, you can activate Doppelganger and get even more Judgment Cuts. This move is so busted that I'm not joking when I say that the speed run for this game for the longest time was just spamming Judgment Cuts over and over and over and over again until you beat the game with the occasional Hell on Earth or Judgment Cut end. This is without a doubt my favorite version of Virgil, and even though you once again go through the main campaign, it definitely feels a lot better to do it here because the level and enemy designs are just so much better. And of course, I need to give praise to the Dante boss fight at the very end of Virgil's campaign. Uh, this shit was so cool, and in my opinion, Dante is now the hardest boss in the game, especially on the higher difficulty. You fight him in missions 19 and 20, and the intro for mission 20 is just, oh my god. Dante and Virgil clash at each other while the acapella version of Bury the Light is playing, and it's just, it's, it's perfection. This right here is peak DMC. And before I wrap this up, it cannot be overstated that Bury the Light is a masterpiece. Casey Edwards did it again with the perfect theme for Virgil that is nine minutes long. That man came to work and he delivered. God bless you, Casey. This game is obviously an improvement over the original. However, it is unfortunate that they once again shafted the PC players. I really don't know what the deal is with not putting these updates on PC, but I guess that's what the modding scene is for. Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition gets an S tier right in front of the original. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the tier list. Let me know down in the comments what you think of my list and where you rank each of the Devil May Cry games. I'm very hopeful for the future of this series. We have a Netflix show coming out soon, which I'm very excited about, and hopefully we'll get the next installment in the series sooner rather than later. And before we go, I want to give a big thank you to the YouTube members that help make these videos possible. And if you'd like to join the program, you'll get access to a bunch of special perks. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. That really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified on when the next video goes live. And if you want to see me talk about all of the mainline Resident Evil games, uh, you can check that out with this video right over here. I made this a couple years ago when the style is definitely a lot different from what I currently do today. I still enjoyed it. I'm proud with what I made here. So if you'd like to check that out, uh, that would be cool. Thank you all again so much for watching. I hope you all have a great rest of your evening and I will see you next time.